That was a sketchy dive. Guys, we made it. It's time to go kill some fish. Let's go. It didn't take long at all before I spotted a really nice mutton snapper. So I just tried to do my best to close the gap. Clipped off a shot right there. He went pretty nuts, but I was able to get him up, make sure he didn't get in any holes or anything. And I was stoked. <laughs> First fish of the trip. Buttons really are one of my favorite fish to hunt, and I feel like I understand their behavior kind of well, honestly. You'll see this one in the top right of the screen. I dive kind of slow, and I know that he's gonna be blocked from view. And so the second that he's blocked, I speed up a ton to close the gap while he can't see me. And that really allowed me to get a lot closer to this fish and in range. So I took the shot right there and was able to stick it through and through, right in the gills, and landed another really nice mutton. We definitely had some quality fish in the box, but I had a lot of people to feed. So when I saw this black grouper, I definitely didn't hesitate. Led the shot a little bit and ended up sticking him right in the head. Got him out of the rocks, luckily, because there was some current and these heads were out in 50 feet and that can be a little bit annoying to try to extract fish in. So got him out of there and we had one more fish. Here's me using a little bit of what I learned in Hawaii in a uh, Bahamas situation. So typically, everyone just approaches the hogfish right off the bat, and sometimes they'll spook a little bit, and you'll rush a shot that you really wish that you didn't take. So right here, I'm kind of just letting this thing cruise around for a little bit, and when he turns away from me, that's when I start approaching, because I don't want him looking right at me. And then I kind of point the pole spear towards his tail at first so that he turns. And once he turns, I take that broadside shot, already in my hands while I'm still down there. All smiles on the way and knowing that we were about to feast on some fish. Guys, had an awesome day today. Got plenty for dinner, so I'm pretty stoked. Why don't we get back out there in the morning and see what we can't do tomorrow. See you guys there. Guys, we're gonna get in this crystal clear water and see if we can't catch some lobster real quick and then maybe go and see if we can't get some more fish. Spotted a nice lobster right here immediately and I wanted to tickle him out because sometimes once you shoot him in there, it can be kind of a pain to pull him out. But it was kind of of no avail, so I just decided to shoot him out here. We're literally in like eight feet of water, but I draw back the Hawaiian sling, shoot this thing, and I remember why I was trying to tickle it out because it is such a pain to pull these things out of these really tiny holes. But I know if I rip hard enough, I can get them out. And so I did right there. I went down and tickled this thing out for Taylor real quick. So I'm just kind of poking it in the back and it walks forward almost perfectly right there nice one too so he goes down with three prong sticks them i ended up actually shooting this guy from the surface and that was because we're so shallow that i feel like if i dove i really would have spooked it and i ended up getting a good shot so that was pretty epic for like eight feet of water <laughs> I think we're gonna quit diving these heads and maybe go to the outside reef, see if we can't find some real fish out there. So, wish us luck, we'll see you guys in the water. Right when I hopped in the water, I spotted this stud Sarah mackerel, and I ended up taking a dive on him. I took a pretty long shot, and I thought it would go through and through, but really I just spined him, and so he really couldn't go anywhere. So, I had to chase him down, and you'll see this cuda come in really hot, and that definitely made me dive a little bit sooner than I would have liked to have. But I was not about to watch a little cuda size this thing up and eat it. Reloaded the pole spear and decided it was definitely time to dive as I saw that cuda getting closer and closer. I actually ended up getting another spine shot and this thing didn't even move so that made it way easier. Plus there's a few sharks around, so it's always nice to not have to deal with that. I load up the pole spear as I watch a nice yellowfin grouper go on the sledge. 
and it's kind of a weird angle. So you'll see me actually turn upside down. I do that a lot. And it's facing me right there. So I really want to get a good shot. And guys, I have no idea what happened right there. He was gone. I asked my buddy on the surface what happened and he didn't even see where he went. I'm just kind of taking a random dive here because I saw a really nice ledge and quite a bit of life. To my right, there's a bunch of grunts. I saw a bunch of snappers. And right when I laid down, I actually spotted a grouper staring at me. So I'll let you guys watch how this plays out. <laughs> So I clipped off a great shot, but I wanted to do everything in my power to try to get this thing up in one dive because their gills flare out and it becomes such a pain to get them out sometimes. And honestly, I was just unsuccessful. It was pretty annoying that I had to go back down, but I saw the way that he had turned with my pole spear and I knew that he was not too deep in there, so I was pretty confident that I'd be able to get him out fast. And luckily, I was. So I got him right there. That was about as quick as it gets. I have a bunch of friends over there on this island that we went to and a few of them asked me to bring them some grouper so I always try to shoot at least one or two Nassau's to go give to my local friends because we are diving in their water. Spotted a nice Nassau from the surface and I knew that I'd be able to get him if I just went down kind of slow and tried to approach from an angle that he wouldn't be staring at me too hard from. Now I did see him sideways right here and clipped off a good shot. Luckily he came right out and it was no issue for me to get this thing up in one dive. Made sure to dispatch and bleed this fish, and then I passed them right on into the boat. This nice yellowfin grouper from the surface, and something that I've always been very successful with, is you slightly approach them, and once they start spooking, don't keep approaching. Start to come up, you just wanna put enough pressure on them to go into a hole, and that's exactly what this guy did right here. And if you guys did see on the left side of the screen, a nice black grouper hold up as well. You'll notice I keep shifting angles as I'm going down. What I'm trying to see is which way this fish is facing. And once I saw that, I decided to approach from behind a little bit, swing the pole spear over the edge, went for the stone shot, and unfortunately did not hit it. But I pulled really hard and did get this fish out of the rocks. So that's very satisfying, honestly, because these things can take forever to extract. I thought Garrett was already in the water, but what was really funny was he literally wasn't even there yet. It's already over before you're even in! I decided to leave the black grouper from the last spot since I had already taken that nice yellow fin and lo and behold, paid off because the next spot I actually watched two of them go into a hole about the same size as the last one. So kind of just approaching the same way. I don't know which way they're gonna be in this hole, but I want to come from the side. And once I look in, I actually see its tail flick after a second. That's what it, when I realized where he was. You see that right there. Took the shot mid-body, tore off, and you see both of them kind of go. You see his tear right there, and they go into a whole nother hole. I approached the surface knowing they're probably not in their main hole right now, which is like kind of the deepest one that they like the most. So I knew that I had to breathe up fast and go back down because if, if you don't put that pressure on them, they're going to move and go into a stupidly deep hole and you probably will never see them again. So I approach right here and I see the tail and back section of the fish and I did not want to take a shot and be there forever trying to extract it. So I kind of look around to the front and I notice his head right in there. So move the pole screw over, which is kind of hard to do underwater, get the angle on him the shot right there pulling as hard as I can really really pulling comes out starts fighting me a ton really dragging me all around but ended up getting this thing up in that one dive right there so I was really happy about that another fish avoided getting a bad extraction so I was scared. Not only 
only is it humane to dispatch of the fish as soon as possible, it also makes a huge difference in the meat when you bleed them as well. That's funny as shit, man, because you can see the first spear shot. Yeah, right? You know what I mean? On the side. Uh -huh. Guys, that was the coolest diving. We had so much fun. Thank God it was overcast because I am so sunburnt. We crushed it. This may look like a lot of fish, but we had eight people on the boat and we were all super hungry. All right, guys, awesome day today. Absolutely crushed it. Cannot wait for tomorrow. Bunch of beautiful fish. I cannot wait to eat these things. Oh, it's party time. Oh, bro. It's so fucked, dude. fire. <laughs> Guys, we had such a sick day. We really did crush it. Pretty much a half day of diving, but we got plenty to eat, so really stoked. Two stud groupers, bunch of other fish. Had so much fun. But seriously, stay tuned for tomorrow because that sometimes is the best spearfishing in the whole Bahamas. I absolutely cannot wait. I will see you guys in the morning. Guys, we finally made it to my favorite spearfishing in all of the Bahamas. Crystal clear water, I'm so stoked. Let's get in and see if we can't get some fish. I'm approaching the bottom again for a nice hogfish I see. And you'll see I'm just going nice and slow, taking it easy, looking around, seeing if there isn't anything better. <laughs> I decided to just slowly approach because he was just minding his own business and pointed out his tail again just to kind of give him a move. Stuck a nice shot right in the head right there. Bleeding out. Didn't even have to bleed this thing at the surface. I actually recognize this ledge from the surface. Last year, I actually did my very first two minute dive while looking in this ledge. I remember there just being so much life in here and I was really excited on my way down. Kind of just checked everything out here for a second and then I laid on the bottom and I'll let you guys watch this. Still a ton of life in there, no big groupers like I was hoping for, but I really wanted to shoot this yellowtail snapper. So I laid on the bottom right here, dusted literally I think one time and immediately came in. And then I took way too an aggressive of an approach. See, he's running away from me, and I took a bad shot right there. Comes off, and on my next dive, I watched a Mori eel eating that thing, so I was pretty disappointed. This right here was probably my favorite dive of the entire trip. Saw two nice Nassaws, and there is just so much life. This is so cool. I actually decided I didn't even want to spear this fish. By laying on the bottom and being calm, you can really see how close fish will sometimes let you get to them. It's pretty cool. Now this is something you don't see every day. You kind of watch this shark like twitching and like going through all these holes and ledges and stuff and I figured if it was big enough to hold a shark, it was definitely big enough to hold some other interesting fish. So I loaded up my pole spear and as I looked in, I realized it was open on all sides. So. Usually holes like that don't really hold fish. But as I said, looked up, giant dog snapper. And I was already loaded up, but I figured if I went in there, by the time that I got a shot, I probably wouldn't be able to get it up to the surface in the same dive. So I decided to head up, see if I couldn't catch my breath, go back down, and maybe find it. So I just breathed up and loaded the pole just to have it completely ready. And I decided to check on the other side of the hole because I figured it's a huge ledge and then I watched a big old mutton go in there. And I said, well, if I don't find the dog snapper, I'm definitely going after him. The second that I looked in this hole, the dog was right there, shot him. He went absolutely nuts. I didn't think I'd even be able to get him in this dive. And he tangles up, luckily, he untangles, and I'm just pulling, 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 getting, 
kind of worked really hard, but by the time that I got him out, finally, I'm kind of out of breath, honestly, but get him in my arms, and immediately he knocks my mask off. So my mask is flooded, my eyes are closed, honestly really annoyed, but I'm coming up and finally reach the surface. The most important thing when your mask floods is to realize you're approaching the surface, try to remain as calm as possible, and you're going to be fine. Hard One of my very biggest dog snappers. I love hunting these things and they're so challenging. It really makes it rewarding. So guys, that was awesome and we will catch you guys in the next video.